What's up YouTube, Mozart Designer here, bringing you another Unreal Engine tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to be doing some uh, blueprint tutorials, and the way I'm going to approach this is just cover kind of one topic at a time, and not do anything lengthy like the level design tutorial, and I'll do my best to make sure the topics overlap each other, and I will try to do as many tutorials as I can, time permitting. So the first tutorial, I figured let's do something very simple uh, where you step into a trigger and you can turn on the light. And along with that, we use uh, simple delays to toggle the light on and off. So let's begin. So I'm using the first person uh, template in Unreal Engine. Uh, the first thing I want to do uh, is just hit play. You can see what it looks like. And it's your first person template. You got a simple gun, and you can walk around, jump around, strafe, etc. Works for us. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go to my uh, modes, and I'm going to search for trigger. And I'm going to select a trigger volume. Now, well, in the editor, I can see where the trigger volume is, but in game, I can't. That's a good reason for that, because if you're playing a video game, you don't want to see where all the triggers are. They're just kind of something you can see behind the scenes when you're working on the game, but the player doesn't know where the triggers are. But the triggers here doesn't do anything, because we haven't hooked it up to anything. So let's make this trigger bigger. Select it. And we'll just scale it up. And we'll put it over here. And for the sake of knowing where our trigger is, I'll just put copy this guy and put it on the ground as if it's like a subframe of reference so I know where my trigger is. All right, so that's the first part. We set up a trigger. Now, what we need to do is create a blueprint for our light. Uh, the reason we want to create a blueprint is that we can reuse this light over and over uh, multiple times without creating a new light each time. So let's go to uh, our content browser. I'm going to go to content, starter content. I'm going to go to props. And we're going to go to uh, lamp wall. Let's drag that in the world. So now we have a, the, the lamp asset. We're going to create a new blueprint from there. So what we can do is actually we didn't need to do that step at all, but just so we know what asset we're going to use. Uh, so let's go to uh, up the top blueprints. Uh, we're going to do empty uh, blueprint class and we're going to do a actor and where do we want to save it? We'll save it under blueprints and we'll call it my we'll call it light01 now here's the blueprint editor So in here, we need to add what are called components. So the first component I'll add is the static mesh. So I can select it, hit Control B, find where it is, and I can drag and drop it into the Blueprint browser, the Blueprint uh, constructor. All right, now we can delete this guy. If we go to our window content browser, we'll go to content, blueprints, my light 01. We have now placed it in the world. Now the big white white sphere is just 
the center point of the blueprint after, you'll not see that in game. So let's test that. And you always want to hit compile on your blueprints to make sure they're working before you play in game. So this is working. So play from here. And there's my light blueprint. And I'm inside my trigger. And we don't see anything happening. In fact, we don't need this because we kind of have a frame of reference where we put our trigger. It's next to this box. So let's ignore uh, that. And now let's focus on our blueprint. So I'm going to make this bigger. In our blueprint, since it's light, we need a light source. So we'll go to Add Component. And we can do Search. We'll type Blue Light. Point Light. And now I can manipulate it in here to see where it's actually the light should be coming from. Let's say around about there. And let's minimize. Now you see there's a big bright spot where the light source is. I can turn off the grid temporarily and just erase it and say right there is good. Alright, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the event graph of the light. The event graph is the instructions to tell the blueprint what to do. So I'm going to delete these guys and create uh, what's called a remote remote event. So if you right click and you type, you want to have your context sensitive on. This will help you find what function you're looking for that will work with your blueprint. So I'm going to type in remote. Uh, Event. I think it's called create create event. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. What I was looking for is if you just type the word event, you want to get add custom event. Remote event knows that it's called an Unreal Engine 3. Unreal Engine 4 is called custom event. So right now it's called custom event 0. We will name this. Turn light on. We'll create another custom event. And call this one turn light off. Now, when you have a function, you can drag out a line to tell it what to do. So in this case, we want to turn the light on. So what we need is a reference to our light source. So if you keep see on the left side, if you go back to our viewport, we have basically two components. We have the wall actor and we have the point light. We don't want to mess with this. We want to mess with this guy. So we're going to go to our after event graph. Select this and drag it into the world. This has now created a reference to the point light. Now for the point light, we're gonna see what's available from here. So I'm gonna drag out a pin and search for visibility, set visibility. So Blueprint works kind of like a programming language where you can do sets and gets, and I'll talk about this more later when we cover uh, uh, Booleans. It makes a lot more sense there. But in this case, let's just set the visibility. And when I turn the light on, I'm going to set the visibility to true. And how I know this is a true function is if it's red. Blue are references, reds are booleans. Booleans is basically encoding true or false. So in this case, next to the new visibility, I'm going to check it as true. So now I'm going to drag off another pin. Do set visibility and it's going to be set to false and it's coming from light off. Compile and it works. Okay, it's going to minimize that. Now, in our world, we have what's called a level blueprint that works within this level. Now the level blueprint will now talk to the light blueprint actor. So what we'll do is we'll go to our 
open level blueprint and we'll select our uh, trigger and if you right click you have a thing that says add event for trigger volume one we're going to click on collision we're going to do on actor begin overlap what this means is when the actor meaning the player overlaps his volume do something in our case turn on the light so I'll begin volume uh, on overlap begin trigger volume what are we going to do uh, we want to turn off turn on the light how do we talk to the light what you do is you select the light right click and do create a reference to light zero one Kind of how we created a reference to the point light inside the light bl blueprint. I'm now creating a reference of the light itself inside the level blueprint. Now I'm going to drag off the pin and search for turn. And now I have turn off light, turn light off, turn light on. I want turn light on. All right. And just to make sure this works, we're going to what we're going to do is on. It's called event begin play when the level starts I'm gonna get another I'm gonna get a reference to my light and make sure it is turned off when I start so that's what my, my uh, blueprint function looks like referencing the light and the light function and telling it to on event begin play turn it off and when I step inside the trigger volume turn it on so let's see if this works we'll compile it's good minimize we'll uh, hit play and before I do that let me expand this out so you can see something very neat let's see if I can fit this correctly Hit play again. So on event begin play, you saw a light went off. That turned the light off. And as we can see in the right corner, the light is off. And I step over it, you'll see the trigger volume light up and turn the light on. Ta-da, light on. Now what if we want to turn the light off in the same situation? We'll hit escape, we'll go back to our blueprint here. And what we'll do is select this guy, the trigger, the uh, trigger volume, add event for trigger volume, collision on end overlap. So the player leaves the volume. What are we going to do? Select my light, create a reference to it, and I'm going to do turn off light. Now with this setup, I should be able to walk inside the volume, turn the light on. Walk inside the volume, turn the light off, and when I start the level, the light turns off anyways. So let's compile. I'm going to hit play. So you saw the light flash, the, the, the line uh, turned off the um, light. Now I'm going to overlap my trigger. Light turns on, light turns off, and overlap. Overlap, and overlap. Overlap, and overlap. Pretty simple. Now let's say we wanted to have the light turn on after some time when we in came inside and outside the trigger. It's very simple. We'll just break this link. Right click. Break link. Uh, oh, that both selected. Yeah. All right. Then we're gonna go uh, take a drag a pin out and just type the word delay and drag this out. And let's see, after five seconds, turn the light on. And the same thing here. When I leave, it takes five seconds to turn the light off. So now my blueprint function looks like this inside the level, referencing the light, the light uh, blueprint. Now I hit play. 
you see the light went to delay it's counting down and it light turned on I'll step outside the trigger it's counting the delay and the light turned off back inside light turns on back outside again light turns off But to make things cleaner, let's say this is how we want my light to work every single time. So to clean up my blueprint, I can just delete this from here and here and connect this back to um, the trigger. Begin overlap and end overlap. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my light blueprint. And in here, when I do light, turn on light, I'm going to break the link. I'm going to do delay in here. And I'm going to do five seconds. And the same thing for turn light off function. Set that to five seconds. Slide this over. Connect the completed pin to the set visibility. So turn on light, delay, completed, set visibility to true. Turn off light, delay, completed, set visibility to false. Compile. Compile. All right, both blueprints are good, the level blueprint and the light blueprint. I'll hit play. Now, you see what happened there. When we entered the level, the light was on. But the event begin play went to turn off light, and the turn off light function said wait five seconds, then it turned off our light. Now, I step inside the trigger, went to the function turn on light, and the light turned on. If I leave the trigger, it goes to the function turn off light, and it uses the delays. Now, here's what's cool about blueprints. Let's say I want to have two of these lights. So I'll go back to my uh, content browser, uh, select my light 01, and I'll put it somewhere else. Let's see, uh, on this side. And then what I'll do is hit, just hit play. I'm not going to do any blueprint scripting, so hit play. Now, here's what happens. That light, second light didn't do anything because I have not talked to it. And now this gives me the ability to use triggers and other scripting to talk to the lights individually. So what I can do something really cool here is where I can uh, go to my uh, level blueprint, uh, create another reference to this light, the second one, create reference to light zero two, and let's say on begin play, we'll turn it off. So it'll do the same thing like the first light. Now what I can do is set up another, I can have a short delay in here, turn on light, delay, because the light function itself has its own delay, so I don't, I don't delay too much. Let's say the default points are two is fine, delay, and then create a reference to my second light. And we'll turn this on. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it off. 
and we'll create a second reference, a third reference for our second light, and we'll turn it on. So we'll know what this blueprint is saying is when we start the level, turn off both lights. So it'll take five seconds to do that because our function here says delay five seconds. Let's and uh, when I overlap trigger, it'll turn um, the first light on, delay, keep the second light off. When I leave the trigger, it'll turn off the first light, delay, and turn the second light back on, and I can do this back and forth. So both lights are on. Both lights are off. Step inside the trigger. Light turns on. Step outside the trigger. It does light turns on. Moves back and forth. And again. Oh, I don't think I'm inside of the trigger. There we go. So there you go, it's a very simple example of how to uh, create a uh, blueprint. So we, uh, we made our light blueprint, we just added a static mesh component, a light component, gave us some very simple scripting, and then referenced that light actor in here in the level blueprint and did some more very basic scripting to turn it on and off using a trigger. Hopefully this uh, first uh, tutorial was helpful. Uh, down the road I'll try to expand on this or do something else uh, and just talk about different things related to Blueprint because Blueprint's not as easy as level design where I can teach a uh, full throughout flow. Uh, I'd rather teach it bits and pieces so you can learn uh, the components uh, individually and then Think of your own ways to combine them, uh, because that's how I learned Blueprint and then Unreal Engine three's uh, Kismet. It was just small bit by bit, and then over time, just some really large, complex scripted elements. So hopefully, it's helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next uh, Blueprint tutorial. Cheers.